The subject of the matador is one that Picasso grew heavily interested in within the course of his career. He began exploring the antagonistic concept of matador versus bull, or man versus beast, in 1900, with a series of early pastels named La Corrida. That stripped the matador of his usual macho image and presented the role in a calm and rather domestic manner. Progressing beyond those early references, however, Picasso produced two series of works between 1930 and 1935. These are as much an expression of Picasso's internal conflict and identity as they are a reference to classical and Spanish culture. Only two years afterwards, in 1937, Picasso completed his masterpiece, Guernica, wherein the motif of the bull was key to the symbolism within the composition and the notable absence of the matador was as important as those symbols that were present. Produced in 1917, Tête de Matador was one of a number of works completed after watching a bullfight at Fréjus and it's one of the final times in his life that Picasso explored the subject. According to the exhibition, Late Picasso, that took place at London's Tate Gallery in 1988, the subject of Picasso's work at this time were particularly poignant. This painting is a preparatory study for the masterpiece that has been referred to not only as the act upon which all the art of our century is built, but as the most innovative painting since Giotto, which triggered Cubist painting and laid the foundations for modern art, is similarly entitled Les Demoiselles d'Avignon and hangs in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. In fact, the finished piece is revered to such an extent that the Director of Department of Painting and Sculpture at the Museum of Modern Art in New York swore he would kill himself if the plane transporting the work should crash. This watercolour and gouache study is one of a number of works that Picasso created in preparation for the finished work and is recognisable as the figure on the lower right of the final composition. Although the subject is a prostitute in a brothel, the figure is not altogether recognisable as human in all its form. In fact, rather than wishing to depict human desire and seduction via this sexually charged subject, he wished to depict a primal scene that was at once physically aggressive and sexually intimidating. Despite depicting only one figure out of the five illustrated within the finished work, this study manages to communicate the sense of violent energy that Picasso's final picture stands for in art history. Furthermore, it is notable for the recognisable influence that African tribal art had on Picasso's art at the time of the painting. This watercolour was completed near the end of months of preparation and contributed towards creating a modern masterpiece that revolutionised the art world.